Since it launched late last year, the Google Pixel has been our pick for the best Android phone, and assuming you can actually find it, it's still a great option. But with a new generation of phones comes a new overall champion. Right now, in spring 2017, the Samsung Galaxy S8 is the best Android phone you can buy. Stick around, I'll tell you why. Before we get going, a quick reminder that we're sharing this award between the S8 and S8 Plus like we did for the Pixel on Pixel XL before. Main reason is that aside from the size, these two are just so similar that they're practically the same phone. Check out Florence Ion's comparison between the two flavours of Galaxy S8, we'll link it at the end of this video. And while you're there, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of what we do here at Android Central. So whether you're looking at the 5.8 inch Galaxy S8 or the 6.2 inch S8 Plus, these are two phones that feel like they've arrived straight from the future. The design language that Samsung kicked off two years ago with the S6 Edge has finally matured into this almost symmetrical sliver of metal and glass, and in the orchid grey colour I've been using, the polished rim makes for a striking contrast against the pitch black front. It's a gorgeous space age design that puts more traditional bezel laden phones to shame, and it's built around this all encompassing slab of a screen, Samsung's new infinity display. Now, smarter people than me have run all kinds of tests on this display to show scientifically that it's the best, but really, that much is obvious just by looking at it. You of course get the deep blacks and vibrant colours you come to expect from Super AMOLED, but brightness and daylight visibility is where the S8 excels. No phone screen on Earth works this well in direct sunlight. When you're not outside, it's easy to get lost in the S8's sumptuous curved display, which melts over the side of the phone in a way that's much more subtle than the old edge screens you might be used to. And yep, it's taller now too, with the new 18.5x9 aspect that admittedly raises a few usability challenges, especially on the larger S8 Plus I've been using. Thankfully, Samsung's got your back with a pretty useful one-handed mode to help you out when using two hands isn't an option. It's fitting that just as Samsung's hardware reaches its zenith, the software is finally good enough to truly complement it. The new Samsung Experience, don't call it TouchWiz, has a slightly sci-fi aesthetic and wireframe icons to complement the bold whites and pastel colours that have been working their way in there over the past year. A lot of this is familiar from the Galaxy S7 on Nougat, but the S8 adds that extra layer of polish. A great example of this is the S8's Infinity wallpaper feature, where the backdrop and the always-on display, lock screen and home screen animate smoothly into each other. There are some great little visual flourishes too, like this pop-up animation when a new message arrives. I also want to talk about UI speed and touch response because that's one area where Samsung has lagged behind in the past, but now, whether it's because of the faster hardware or just software tuning, the S8 is noticeably quicker to respond to touch. It's difficult to say whether it's quite pixel fast, but if it's not, it's certainly really, really close. Spec fiends will be happy to see the S8 is the first phone to feature the new Snapdragon 835 chip in the US. Internationally, it's running an equivalent Exynos 8895 chip, which is designed by Samsung. Whichever one you get, the S8 has more horsepower than any Android phone released up to this point, which translates into plenty of performance for games and multitasking. And on a related note, that extra tall display works phenomenally well with Android's multi-window feature. And there are still tons of little features to discover here and there if you go digging, way too many to mention here. But at the core of the Galaxy experience are important things like water resistance with an IP68 rating, wireless charging and quick charging. Plus there are three ways to securely unlock your phone with biometrics, which we'll get to later because they're not exactly the greatest thing about these phones. Even in the areas where Samsung isn't dominating the competition, it still more than holds its own with the S8. Both phones' batteries will get you through a standard full day of use, but probably not more than that. I've been getting around 4.5 hours of screen on time in the S8 Plus, Andrew Martinick has been getting 3.5 to 4 on the smaller S8 over in the US. And although the numbers haven't changed much from the S7's camera, the S8's 12 megapixel rear camera sees a catch up to the Google Pixel and LG G6 in low light, thanks to what Samsung calls multi-frame processing. It's basically Samsung's take on the fancy computational photography stuff from the Google Pixel's HDR Plus mode. It's tough to say whether the S8 really outperforms the Pixel on the whole. That is a phone famed for its amazing camera. It's certainly faster though, and it produces sharper image and low light, but it's not quite as dependable in really tough blown out conditions, like when you're shooting directly into the sun. You'll definitely benefit from optical image stabilization though, and the much improved software stabilization for video, which makes things much smoother. 
and an f1.7 lens can also produce some slick bokeh effects in macro shots without having to rely on software fakery. As excellent as the Galaxy S8 is, there are some big reasons why you may want to pass on it, and they're all completely obvious things that you've probably heard about before. Aside from the fact that it's just expensive, the S8's fingerprint scanner is in an infuriating spot right next to the camera, and that's going to be deal-breakingly awkward for some folks. You've also got the option of iris unlock or face recognition, but neither is 100% reliable and you can't use both at the same time. And there's also the fact that it's pretty darn slippery. In my couple of weeks with the S8 Plus so far, I've missed the easier grippability of the chunkier LG G6. This is a phone that you're going to be petrified of dropping. On the Mobile Nations team, we've already recorded our first Galaxy S8 screen casualty, RIP this five-day-old Galaxy S8 Plus, which belonged to Windows Central contributor Matt Brown. And you may have noticed we've not yet mentioned Bixby, Samsung's AI servers at all in this video. That's because it's pretty much useless and probably will be for the foreseeable future. Bixby Vision is fun to play around with, I guess. It can tell you what kind of flower you're looking at or how good your wine is. But the rest is a non-starter right now, and we'll have to see if Bixby Voice can change that in the months ahead. In the super polished world of modern flagship smartphones, the Galaxy S8 is a little odd in that it has these couple of very obvious weaknesses, but even so, the S8 as an overall package is worthy of the massive hype surrounding it. It sets new standards in smartphone design, nails important areas like performance and software, and matches its best rivals in camera quality. It's going to be a long year full of many great Android flagships, but if you're after the best phone of the here and now, there's no question that's the Samsung Galaxy S8. That's it for now, be sure to hit that red subscribe button if you want to see more of the latest Android reviews and opinions as they land. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.